Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to another episode. This is uh, BD Alchemist and today I want to do a video on speed density for Evos or generally um, versus your stock system which is MAF or MAF or MAP uh, hybrid. How to do it um, First, I'm going to show you what it is first, and then uh, how to convert it to SD, which is speed density, what sensors to use, what to change, and then towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you what to change in the system itself, uh, meaning the uh, tune. Um, again, this is just a beginner. You really shouldn't be doing anything if you are not familiar with anything. Let's just clarify just a few points. All right, so we do have a Evo 8 here. And currently it is using um, the stock system and everything. So what that basically means is it has a MAF, mass airflow uh, sensor. It's literally measuring the mass of air, uh, which is, you know, grams per second uh, coming in to the motor and it's done at the intake system um, there's a little uh, sensor in here that basically measures the amount of air and temperature along with the map sensor which is manifold absolute pressure which is right here on the intake manifold um, it calculates how much air according to um, you know the math and map and then it delivers fuel accordingly so what speed density is um, it gets rid of the MAF system, MAF, because it is restrictive. The, this design specifically is very restrictive. Um, and, you know, the intake is smaller. Yes, you could get a bigger pipe um, and then, you know, use, uh, I guess, a, um, a calibration to get more power out of it, less restrictive. But with Evo 8s and 9s, there's actually... A whole speed density system uh, conversion that you can get which gets rid of that replaces it with a air temperature sensor somewhere on the charge pipe and then it uses a map sensor only now you could use a stock map sensor uh, which is I think two bar so you're maybe two and a half you're restricted to 22 psi 24 psi but if you want to do more than that people usually the most common is omni four bar um, that will, you know, take you up to 44 PSI uh, of boost. And um, along with a temperature sensor. So that is basically generally what speed density is. Important thing to know, speed density or SD, when it uses the map sensor, it needs another temperature sensor uh, to kind of calibrate the, the, the density of the air. So colder air, more dense, more oxygen versus hotter air. So you do need to put a air temperature sensor or use the fuel temp sensor to uh, uh, calculate for that. It's a very easy to do. All you do is remove this, um, you know, take the plug out and there's two wires that goes from the MAF sensor and connects to an IAT sensor and you just replace that. It's a plug and play for Omni 4 bar. I personally like the AEM 5 bar, but uh, most common is Omni 4 bar. I think it's the cheapest as well. A couple of benefits to doing uh, a speed density is now the air is being measured before it enters the motor. So it enters the turbo this way, and there's a leak somewhere after the MAF, your car will bug out. There'll be red, running red, you'll throw code. Um, a lot of cars can doesn't even run. Um, because of the leak, it goes to limp mode. And you cannot run, or if you do run a uh, venting to atmosphere blow off valve, it will also freak out. It'll throw off the calculations. If there's a leak here, it'll throw off the calculations. On speed density, um, it's only being measured at the throttle, I'm sorry, at the manifold. So leaks before it, yes, it'll call rolling like shit, but you'll still be able to run um, because it, it is still calculating for um, air at the manifold, the pressure. That are some of the benefits and uh, advantages and disadvantages of MAF or MAP. I personally, on Evo 8s and 9s, I like the speed density. 
Um, but Evo 10s, they actually have, on Evo 10s, um, they actually have a hybrid system as well. Uh, they use a MAF and a MAP. Uh, let me see if I can show you some examples. There is a way to kind of trick the ECU into using the, uh, well, it's a ghetto <laughs> speed density, but there's a way for the ECU to use the map sensor only. Um, there isn't a tune out there right now that completely deletes the, the math calculation. So what you end up doing is you set all the uh, values for the math sensor very high. Um, so it, it basically stops using, it thinks something's wrong with the math sensor and it stops using the um, map sensor and goes only with the map. So same concept, but you still have to keep the, the map plugged in because it has the IET sensor with it. Well, this one doesn't actually have a motor, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so it, it basically you gotta put the 655 or whatever the highest value is on the map uh, horizontal and then it tricks the system into only using the map sensor. Um, but you still have to have it plugged in so it kind of defeats the purpose. I kind of like the the way this is built. Um, I'm used to Corvettes and things like that that has a MAF system. It is very good on daily driving and you know, uh, it's, you can make it very smooth. Uh, but it is very rewarding when they both work together. Um, also, I think it's easier to diagnose things because you could read a MAF value and then a MAF value, you know there's a leak somewhere in between the tune. Let me show you how to do that on the actual tune. So this part, I'm going to try to explain what I do to um, change the ROM, change the tune, to adjust for the physical changes when you have converted from um, a, a hybrid of MAF and MAP to just MAP sensor. Um, so this is the SD part um, that your computer needs in order for it to now use the new uh, sensors to calibrate um, using the speed density system. The way you get to this is first you download, um, you know, just Google Tefra V7 and you can download it from Evo M form. for v7 and there's actually a whole write-up if you search on the internet that you can actually physically do um, the write-up is pretty lengthy it makes you go through calibrating everything through your math and then converting it over i do a little bit differently i think i do what everybody else does who's been doing it for a little bit of time um but i'll show you my process maybe it'll help so you go here um you know roms are moved here you, you should read everything that is being said here if this is your first time doing it so move you just download from Tefra v7 and then whatever your ROM is um, you do have to have all the uh, base XMLs in order for you to see the Tefra v7 speed density um, system uh, otherwise you won't be able to open it so make sure you have all the definitions and XML files in the right uh, field so back to what I basically do. So now that your car has a uh, an IAT sensor, intake air temperature sensor, and a some kind of uh, map sensor to sense how much uh, pressure is being ran in the manifold, um, there are two different kinds of uh, pressure sensors. One will only read um, absolute uh, pressure which is basically negative and positive the other will read um, anything above atmospheric so right now at any given time the atmosphere of planet earth is you know pushing down 14.5 14.7 depending on the altitude um, pounds of pressure on per square inch of your body and everything else so the psi based uh, sensors that sometimes people use on on cars that will only read your 14.7 would be zero so it only read boost so make sure you get the right um, map sensors the most common use as i said earlier is omni 4 bar i personally like the aem 5 bar 
Um, I think it's just more smoother and more durable, but um, you can use whatever you want. You can actually use a stock one as well, so it doesn't matter. So basically what I go here is this, the first table um, is to calibrate your sensor itself. You need to let it know the way you download the, uh, the ROM. It's already, I think, calibrated to JDM or, or Omni 4 bar, but you have to rescale it. That's what they call rescaling. Scaling is basically these values. Um, rescale it to uh, your new sensor, so whatever you pick. So you go to edit, you go to map edit definitions, and you see it's, it's set to Omni 4 bar. You click here, you can choose whichever sensor that you have. If you're using uh, a stock one, then choose the stock one. Uh, if you're using something else, then choose the something else. So for our purpose, everybody's going to use, most of the people I say, is going to use the Omni 4 bar. So we set it to Omni 4 bar. And I start with one to one ratio. So to understand what that is, is when the sensor sees um, say, I don't know, uh, 30 KPAs, which is 30 to 60 is idle. It's going to use, it's going to tell the ECU that, Hey, we are seeing 30. Now you can change this. You can have this read higher or lower. If you want a leaner idle or a richer idle, you can do it from here. I suggest not to change this. I leave this as one-to-one -one and then only up top when in boost, so 120 is about, you know, like five pounds or seven pounds. Um, it'll, you know, calculate for five to seven pounds. But once it gets to, say, 35 pounds, it'll tell the system to, hey, um, use 400 kPa, which is 40 pound calculation. The way you, the reason why you want to do that is safety. And I'll show you what that means. Um, so let's just go to, say, our fuel system. And this is literally what it is, what it is uh, referring to. The system reads, say, uh, 11 KPAs. Um, and, you know, most ECUs use KPAs, and um, it's a standard of measuring load. Um, so if it uses 11 KPAs, the system will calculate. It'll tell it to, hey, use 11 right here, like somewhere here. If it sees 30 KPAs, it'll see 30. Hey, use these columns right here. When it sees, say, 100 KPAs, which is this column, and I tell it to use, um, I don't know, uh, 150, it'll use calculations right here, which is a little richer, as you can see. Usually, it's gradual as uh, load goes up. You want to make it richer and richer. So that is... A one-to-one -one ratio versus, uh, you know, not one-to-one -one ratio, whatever addition that you added to it, whatever multiplication, whatever um, scaling system that you added. Now, that's one. The second um, table is your actual VE, which is vehicle efficiency, volumetric efficiency. This is it works a little different in, in this um ROM than it does with I would say standalone ECUs and I'll and I'll show you what that means so be very careful on what you're doing so let's pull up the uh, table again so I can show you how you're manipulating these calculations okay so you have your one-to-one -one ratio um, that you set up and I think this is where a lot of people are unaware that this is what's happening. This is what these numbers are doing. They just simply think it's richer or leaner, but it's more complicated than that. This itself is not going to make you richer or leaner. It's, you know, this a table, this, the field table is involved, a lot of other filters. So just say you're at idle. Uh, typically, these things idle at 40 uh, kp, 30, 40, maybe even 60, depending on how high your RPMs are. So you're at here. And you set, um, your RPM is set to uh, idle at 1,000 RPMs. So whatever this is, so this is one-to-one, -one, right? The sensor's sensing, uh, you know, negative 14 to 20 uh, vacuum, which is around 
41 to 61 kPa's. So it wants to use this cell to calculate your fuel along with this uh, filter. So you're at 1,000 RPMs and 85% and of VE. So you're telling the computer that, hey, at 1,000 RPMs, my engine is doing 85% of its efficiency. So it, what this does, what this ROM does, is literally takes this uh, cell, multiplies it by 85%. So if it was a 60, it'll most likely be at, you know, somewhere here. So it uses this as a base and multiplies it by this to get total number of which cell that it's going to use on these maps. So to give you another example, at 3,500 RPM, so you should be stock EC, you should be coming into boost. At 3,500 RPM, you are saying, I don't know, uh, say 100 load or you're at zero, you're starting to spool up or 120. It'll use... 100% uh, of it, so it'll literally calculate these cells. But then, if you change, say, this to at a, in boost, you want to change it to 110, 110% vehicle. Say your um, engine is uh, at 110% of its efficiency, so because you're in boost, um, and it reads, say, I don't know, 16 pounds. 16 pounds right here or 16 but then in, in you told it to use a calculation you're you're telling it to use uh telling it that it's 110 percent uh, efficiency is going to add 10 percent to this map to this uh table um which means that instead of using calculation from 160 is going to use what 10 percent of 160 is 16 more so like 128, I'm sorry, 228. So it's going to use load cells here, somewhere here, significantly richer. The difference between this uh, VE, these VE tables versus a standalone is standalones are usually for fueling. But um, Tefra V7 maps does these load calculations, which cell is going to use also for timing. So if you can't figure out why your timing is not following the path you're telling it to, and this is the reason why. So it'll literally use timing tables uh, in the same cells, which is here, instead of using it here. So you have to be aware of that. And so one of the biggest things that I had to figure out um, on this. So that is the main um, setting that you want to do. Uh, set barrel should be you know set one to one, um, and a lot of people get confused on the air intake temperature scaling. So this is already pre scaled. You can look at the schematics or scaling sent by whatever um, brand sensor you're using. But before you do that, there are some issues with the SD maps that's been identified. Starting and calculation issues. So, so these starting fix ones, turn them on. Believe me, your car's going to be smooth. Also, the SD um, IAT to MAT um, was basically you're using the IAT sensor that's connected to your math for MAT, which is manifold absolute temperature. If you, if you um, leave it at 103, that's going to use the temperature sensor. Uh, the intake air temperature that's connected to your MAP sensor now. If you set this to zero, uh, zero E, uh, this will use the fuel uh, temperature sensor instead of your um, air temperature sensor to calculate air density. Now, they both work. The fuel is more stable, I think. The fuel temp is more stable. It is a little runs a little richer, richer, but you can adjust for that. But IAT, when you get a chance, you should use it. I think the daily driving is good. But people who are running high boost and still using stock ECU, I would not run an IAT because those things leak. I'm sorry. Put another hole in your charge pipe, it's going to leak. Um, 
that's basically what it is. And what else you want to do is, um, I think the rest of the stuff is pretty much the same. Um, you want to copy all your tables, your uh, field tables and timing tables to this map. Copy everything that you can. And I think only thing difference is this. Oh, um, the other thing you want to do is I, this is one of the first things I do. Two byte to one byte load factor. If you can't figure out why your load is not reading correctly or it's not reading after a certain point, this is what it is. You have to make this the same as ECU flat. I'm sorry, Evo scan. So say you set your load to 1.3. On stock, um, stock uh, anything below 30 PSI I'm going to run, I set it to 1.3. Anything above 30 PSI, I set it to 1.524. Say you set it to 1.3, you go to Evo Scan, and you go to the load factor, added data, and you change the multiplier. You see, evaluation. <laughs> Is set to 1.4 so both of them have to match you have to set to 1.3 then it'll read, read accurately um and that's basically the basics of changing to sd then afterwards stay off boost make sure everything is you know running correctly i would lower the waste gates uh, i would set the boost a little lower i would set everything to a little richer i would set the timing lower too and then start you know slowly increasing um see if what the car likes but it will make your car run a lot smoother um i love uh, the sd format of this i mean it's not standalone but it's very very good um so uh one other thing that you want to do um and i guess i could do another video on how to do boost um, when you are doing your boost and you're on sd you need to um, change the scaling of these things according to your map sensor as well, because that's your go-to. That's the only thing that's basically reading boost. So you go to edit definition, you go to the desired PSI or load or whatever um, that you're using for boost, and you have to set this to um, whatever map sensor you're using. So if you're using Omni 4 bar, you have to set it to Omni 4 bar. And you see, well, I had to set it to something else and it was reading, you know, a different number. Now you can play with it. It'll be the limit of the, let me see, uh, it'll be the limit of the, of the map sensor. Uh, I think Omni is like what? See, Omni 3 bar, let's set it to 4 bar. Okay, so it changes the um, the way the boost is scale in your limits as well. Okay. This is the Omni bar four bar limit. A lot of people uh, have asked me, "Hey, how come I can't set this to past twenty? Because you're in the wrong um, sensor. You set it up for the wrong sensor." So most, I mean, when people download this, I think it comes in the JDM3 bar. Um, so you're stuck at a certain, you know, boost. So I use uh, um, 5 bar, AEM uh, 5 bar, so just call me in 05. And, you know, this maxes out, I think, at, you know, some very high uh, adjustment. But anyway, so this is, you have to change this. Otherwise, your boost is not going to be calculated correctly. Same thing with the boost adder. You need to go to edit, you need to edit definitions, and then change it to whatever your um, map sensor that you're using. But that's um, basically it. I hope I have been helpful. If there's any other topics that I can cover as I'm thinking about it, and more questions I get, the more I'll do. Um, again, this is all my strategy. Um, you might find a different way online whichever works for you this works for me because i do have processes and set up i just don't go into a car and start tuning it i like overdoing it a long period of time i uh, basically 
have my own process. So I take steps. I mean, before I even flash the card, there's like 10, 20 steps that I take. Um, so this works for me. I hope I've been helpful. Um, leave a comment on whatever else you want to know. Any corrections that you think is necessary, let me know. Um, and thank you for watching.